guys welcome back to the youtube channel what did y'all think about that spooling that thing was rocking that forced inductions gtr 102 just singing i love it there's nothing like a turbo that spools up and spools up rapidly and a car that can get up there and stage in three or four seconds so today i'm going to show you how to make that happen i'm also going to show you what not to do so you don't make the mistake and it made it spool up worse. But here you go, guys. I'm gonna show you how to take a real big turbo with a real small engine and spool it up. GTR 102 Turbo with a 364 inch small block Chevrolet. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Go to our website, turbojohnracing.com to grab yourself some merch. Appreciate it, guys. Check it out. All right, guys, we're going to start with this bad one. This one is terrible. That thing, you heard it, it just it come up and then all of a sudden it died. And so essentially it was like it hit a rev limiter and it really did. It hit a rev limiter that is a power. It is a horsepower rev limiter. I know that sounds odd, but that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what happened. So on that one where it did not spool up. So let me show you what happened here. This red line here is the, is the RPM. And I've got boost down here on my blue line. And this purple line is is timing and the green line up here of course is tps so let's go through this thing this thing is coming on up it spools it starts coming up starts making power and of course if you look over here on the on the side here we've got a target boost that's our dome pressure 10 psi actual boost pressure and then ignition timing these are the ones you want to watch over here so when you're coming up here this thing's coming up it's to the floor i've got it flat footed in there it's, I had the rev limiter to call a rolling two-step. It's, it's adjustable. I'll show you how to set it. But it's 600 RPM higher than what our normal two-step is. It's to help it spool up. That's something that Devin Vanderhoof showed us, and it really works great. But I'll show you where I messed up. So if you're looking now, you're seeing the timing starting to be pulled out. And so here we go. We're rolling. It comes up. It hits like 4,500 RPM almost. At that point, you're like, yes, sweet. It's about to take off. And you notice the boost pressure over here is like 2.4 pounds of boost. Ignition timing is dropping rapidly. So you know what happens when you drop timing. So when you drop timing, generally you lose horsepower. And so the thing with a turbo car, if you pull enough timing out, it'll set the exhaust off late. It'll be a delayed flame front. And so it really spools the turbo, gets it singing, gets it going. But if you pull too much timing, this is exactly what's going to happen. And this is exactly what it did. It's one of those things where pulling too much will definitely interfere with your power production and your spooling. And that's exactly what happened here. Made it up to almost 4,500 RPM. But then if you look at the timing, now the timing is at 8 degrees. It's at 4 pounds of boost. It got to that point and 23 degrees of timing. And then when that timing started ripping out, it just ripped it out too much. It got down to eight degrees of time and it lost all its horsepower. And so then it couldn't continue to build boost. That little motor, that little 364 cubic inch motor ain't never going to send anything off at that point. And I could hear it in the car doing something and I didn't know what it did. I was like, well, that sounded like it dropped a lot of RPM. And I was like, it didn't really sound like it was on the rev limiter anymore. It wasn't on a rev limiter. There was no rev limiter active at this point. When you're trying to cannonball this thing, when you're trying to get it to to boost build on the trans brake you got to get enough timing in it to get it up there and the motor has to be making a reasonable amount of boost before you pull the timing out every motor is different you got to start at a certain point but this was the first time i've ever pulled too much out and had it happen and it was one of those things that we were pulling we, we generally pull 25 degrees of timing out on randy's car and i normally pull 8 to 10 degrees on mine but i was like hmm, let's try it and see what it does at 25 i was thinking that i was going to get a real rapid response but let me show you the other data log from where it did okay. So remember those numbers there, 8 degrees, 7.5 degrees, 7.3 degrees, and look what it did. Let me show you this other data log real fast. Okay, so here is that spool up that you just heard. And I still was pulling a little bit too much timing out at this point. Let me show you what it did. So it comes up here. You see the RPM again is in the red. And you follow it in the same spots over here. But I basically took a little bit of timing so it didn't pull quite so much out. But right there, it did it again. But right there, it come up to 4,400. But then it lost a little bit of RPM. 
but then it was able to, to come back because the timing wasn't quite so low. So instead of, I added basically 10 degrees of timing right there. So instead of pulling out 25, I pulled out 15. And so that little number right there, though, that was enough to pull it off. So I'm still pulling a little too too much. But then it comes up, hits, hits my rolling two step. And you see the boost curve is a lot more flat. I was trying to get it to make seven and a half pounds of boost and it made 7.4, 7.5. And that's what it made. And you see these little blips in the right here, down here on the two step. That's still where it's kind of yanking some timing out, and putting some timing back in, trying to maintain that target uh, boost that I haven't set at. And I'll show you how to do that. So huge difference. So at this point right here, it was still just a tad too much. I'm going to revamp this a little bit to get this little spot right here out. So I'm going to end up not taking quite so much out. And the other thing you can do is you can kind of delay the point at that this is going to pull out the timing. So let me show you what I'm going to do real fast. I'm in the data log now. Basically, this is just an advanced table. It's a 1D advanced table if you're in the holly. And this is the, the timing. You see exactly what we call it. It's a boost offset, boost builder. And this thing works great. It only is enabled when the trans brake launch is enabled and basically right here i've got it pulling it goes down and it was pulling 15 out and now i've already adjusted this a little bit so i'm gonna instead of 12 there i think i'm gonna just go like minus 10 and you know this car i mean it doesn't need it's a little more sensitive than randy so randy's it takes a bunch of timing out to make it work but it's also got a lot of compression it's a bigger motor it's got more horsepower so that's one of the things that it's able to do and so hopefully this right here will be late enough and when it gets to that point there then you know i might actually i might just go ahead and take this one right here up too to make it a little more gradual uh so we'll just put that one right there at like seven let's go seven minus seven point five so we'll put that there and then we're set. And now uh, that's what we're gonna try next. So let's go ahead up here and save this. And then I think we'll be fine here. Uh, the other thing we do, uh, this is the rolling two step. And this is really easy to do. Um, there again, Devin Vanderhoof, I think is the one that actually thought of this. I hate crime race and go follow him on YouTube as well. He does amazing videos. Awesome, super smart guy. But um, he's got videos that talks about this as well. But uh, this is really easy to set up. It's a rev limiter one offset. We call it the rolling two step. I think that's his name. And then I add 600 RPM to whatever my launch two, uh, two step is set at, which is at 4,200. And it really just helps it come up on boost. It gives it more RPM. So as long as your converter is good and it's able to do it, that's exactly what you want to do. And so it's really simple, really easy. Uh, one of the things that I have found that works better is if you notice on the, the rev limiter part, it goes the 6.7 at 600 and then one tenth of a pound later. So at 6.8 pounds, it drops back down to zero. So that puts it back at 4,200 to 4,800 and then one tenth of a pound and that now is at 4200 and so i dropped this down a little bit lower because it's going to affect this other table so on the the timing offset you see that one comes back in at seven pounds of boost this should leave at seven pounds of boost now so this is our pass that we actually run the other day uh where it spun and you see it was on seven and a half was pounds of boost but if you look at the the rpm and that's where that's where the timing is is revolving around is that seven and a half pounds of boost. So our target was seven and a half pounds of boost. So with the next time we're at the track, this seven is going to be the ticket. So what you got to do is real simple. If you get these backwards, what will happen? It'll have like a, a rolling like it'll be 4200, 4700, 4200, 4700, 4200, 4700. It'll be going up and down real high the whole time. It's kind of like a gallop almost. It sounds really weird. I've had Randy's do it a couple times. And so the key thing is, is when you're setting these two up, from what I have seen when I'm doing it, is when you're doing the timing, the timing needs to be a little bit higher than the rolling two step. So I, I set mine as two tenths apart. So at 6.8, it should come down. So next time I'm at the track tomorrow, this thing ought to leave on seven pounds of boost. That's what I wanted to show you guys tonight is how to make a big turbo get spooled up easily by a small turbo. But more importantly, I wanted to show you what not to do. I wanted to show you that screw up that I made really shocker to me when it went up and then lost all those RPMs when it lost all that horsepower when I pulled all that timing out. So it's amazing what timing can do. So anyway, guys, that's it. I hope you learned something. Comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to go to turbojohnracing.com to get yourself some merchandise. Thanks, guys.